6 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time. Assalamu alaikum. This is Radio Pakistan. The news read by Daman Zaman. The headlines. Pakistan and Qatar have reaffirmed the commitment to deepening strategic ties, underscoring the importance of shared economic goals and regional stability. The Prime Minister has appreciated Qatar's contributions to Pakistan's economic growth and continued support in various sectors. The Foreign Office has rejected any talks with the terror outfit Tariqe Taliban Pakistan, responsible for the killing of civilians and security personnel in Pakistan. The 78th Liberation Day of Gilgit Baltistan will be celebrated tomorrow. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the All Parties Hurid Conference has denounced brutal military tactics aimed at suppressing the legitimate struggle for inalienable right to self determination. The Arab League will hold an emergency meeting in Cairo today to discuss Israel's decision to block the United Nations Agency for operating in occupied Palestinian territories. And now the news in detail. Pakistan and Qatar have reaffirmed the commitment to deepening strategic ties, underscoring the importance of shared economic goals and regional stability. The resolve was expressed during Prime Minister Mohammad Shahbaz Sharif's delegation-level talks with the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamd Asani, followed by a one-on-one meeting to discuss matters of wide array of bilateral interest in Doha today. The two leaders reviewed the entire spectrum of Pakistan-Qatar relations, exploring potential avenues for enhanced cooperation in trade, potential areas of investment, energy and culture. They also discussed regional and international issues of mutual interest, particularly the ongoing genocidal war by Israel against the innocent Palestinian people and escalation of tensions in the region. The Prime Minister commended Qatar's stance on Palestine issue expressed by its Amir during the 79th United Nations General Assembly session held on the 24th of last month. He appreciated mediation efforts by Qatar for immediate ceasefire and unimpeded supply of humanitarian aid. The Prime Minister also invited the Amir of Qatar to visit Pakistan. The Prime Minister Mohammad Shahbaz Sharif has acknowledged Qatar's contributions to Pakistan's economic growth and expressed his gratitude for Qatar's continued support in various sectors. He expressed these sentiments during a meeting with his Qatari counterpart, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdurrahman Asani, in Doha today. They discussed avenues to further strengthen bilateral relations, particularly focusing on enhancing cooperation in trade, investment, energy, and cultural exchanges. The two leaders agreed on the importance of continuing high-level exchanges to promote understanding, foster cooperation and identify new areas for growth. He reiterated Pakistan's commitment to deepening economic ties and emphasized the potential for expanded collaboration. The Prime Minister also thanked his Qatari counterpart for hosting a large number of Pakistani diaspora, acting as a human bridge between the two brotherly countries. Shabazz Sharif extended an invitation to Qatari investors to explore Pakistan's diverse economic sectors, including agriculture, information technology and tourism. A delegation of representatives from the United Nations Women, Pakistan and the Interagency Gender and Development Group called on the Minister for Law, Azam Nazir Tarar, in Islamabad today. The talks focused on collaborative strategies and targeted actions to address the persistent barriers facing women in Pakistan. The minister highlighted the government's continued efforts to advance women's rights and significant legislative measures. He said these efforts are aligned with Pakistan's commitments under the international frameworks to ensure equal opportunities and protection for women. The 78th Liberation Day of Gilgit Baltistan will be celebrated tomorrow. Flag hoisting ceremonies will be held in all the districts, including Gilgit and Skardu. The main ceremony will be held at Chenar Bar Gilgit, while a ceremony will also be organized by the Pakistan Army to pay tribute to the martyrs and Ghazis of the liberation struggle of Gilgit Baltistan. 
The Gilgit Baltistan government has announced public holiday tomorrow in connection with the liberation day of Gilgit Baltistan. Pakistan has ruled out any talks with the terror outfit Tehreek Taliban Pakistan and reiterated its call for the Afghan interim government to act against the militant groups using the Afghan soil to target Pakistan. The Foreign Office spokesperson Mumtaz Zahra Baloch at the weekly media briefing in Islamabad today said Pakistan has absolutely no interest in talks with terror groups which are responsible for the killing of our civilians and security personnel. She said the Afghan authorities have the responsibility to act terror gr- against terror groups, primarily TTP, as Pakistan has also provided concrete evidence to the Afghan authorities. The spokesperson explained that this is not merely Pakistan's demand, but also of the international community. The spokesperson said Pakistan has brought to the attention of the world community towards India's extra-territorial and extrajudicial activities. She expressed the hope that the international community will urge India to restrain from these activities in Pakistan and around the world. This is Radio Pakistan. The Hindu community living in Pakistan is celebrating Diwali festival today. Special prayers have been arranged in Hindu temples across the country in connection with the religious festival. To mark the day, the Hindu community kindle their homes, temples and workspaces with diyas, that is oil lamps, candles and lanterns, while fireworks is also a prominent tradition of the festival. The Prime Minister Muhammad Shahbaz Sharif has extended warm greetings to all the members of the Hindu community on the auspicious occasion of Diwali. In his message, the Prime Minister paid tribute to the valuable contributions of the vibrant Hindu community and Pakistan's progress and development. The Minister for Kashmir Affairs in Gilgit, Baltistan, Engineer Amir Mukam, has said Pakistan will continue to extend moral, political and diplomatic support to the Kashmiri people in their just struggle for inalienable right to self-determination. Talking to a delegation of PMLN AJK in Islamabad, he said India tried to mislead the world through sham elections in the illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, but it failed. He paid glowing tributes to the sacrifices of the Kashmiri people for their inalienable right to self-determination. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the All Parties Hurriyat Conference has denounced India's brutal military tactics aimed at suppressing the Kashmiri people's legitimate struggle for inalienable right to self-determination. In a statement today, after a Hurriyat meeting, the APHC spokesperson, advocate Abdul Rashid Minhas, asserted that India's repressive measures have failed to silence the Kashmiri people's demand for freedom. The spokesperson condemned the Indian military presence in Kashmir, stating that anyone opposing Indian forces faces torture and coercion. The Hurriyat meeting called on the international community to address the Kashmir dispute in its historical perspective and exert pressure on India to release all the political detainees from the unlawful detention. Various representatives of the Hurriyat attended the meeting. The Arab League will hold an emergency meeting today to discuss Israel's decision to block the United Nations Agency for Palestinian Refugees operating in occupied territories. In a statement, the League said the session, led by Yemen and requested by Jordan, will bring together permanent representatives at its Cairo headquarters to form a united response to the ban. A United Nations Special Rapporteur, Francesca Francesca Albanese has urged the suspension of Israel's United Nations membership, citing repeated violations of the international law and the occupation of Palestinian territory. Speaking at a news conference, she said the impunity that has been granted to Israel has allowed it to become a serial violator of international law. Francesca Albanese also recommended the United Nations General Assembly to consider the suspension of Israel's credentials as a member until it ends violating the international law and withdraws the clearly unlawful occupation. And finally, the weather report. 
Mainly dry weather is expected in most parts of the country, while cold weather in hilly areas during the next 12 hours. Smog is likely to persist in northeast Punjab during morning and night hours. And that is the end of this news bulletin. For more news and analyses, log on to our website, radio.gov.pk, and you can also watch live video streaming of our bulletins on the link, facebook.com forward slash Radio Pakistan News Official.